Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com, LearnGPR.com, and I am your GPR professor, and today I'm going to come at you with a video that I think is a very practical concept that people working in GPR, using GPR, who work in the field, collect data, should be aware of. I think it's something that a lot of folks mismanage, this kind of concept. I think they mismanage it. And I kind of want to set the record straight a little bit here with what you can do for your clients and customers in order to limit your own liability, but also give them legitimate knowledge of what's going on below their subsurface and on their site. And also, you know, what they might expect as far as depth is concerned for targets that you identify with the GPR during your surveys. Okay? <clears throat> the concept, which I've never heard anybody talk about it like this, so this, this is the first time that you're hearing it. If you've seen somebody talk about it like this, then put in the comments below where you found it. I want to see it. But nonetheless, the concept, I'm going to call it minimum possible depth. Okay? MPD. MPD. Minimum possible depth. I think I came up with it. I'm coining the term right here. Minimum possible depth of a target. I think this is a neat way that you can express the depths of targets to your customers while being accurate as far as the complexities of the subsurface, but also being as you're giving as much information as you possibly can to your, um, to your customers and clients, okay? So you see over here, we have the ground surface. Here's your GPR pushing it along the ground surface. This is showing what will show potentially a profile. And here it's saying 10 nanoseconds, 20 nanoseconds, and 30 nanoseconds in two-way travel time. Okay? That's two-way travel time. TWTT. Two-way travel time. So that's what your GPR is recording. It's recording the two-way travel time of reflections. It's not recording depth. It's converting two-way travel time into depth depending on what parameters you put in to your system. That's what it's using okay, to make to show you a depth uh, uh, on your y-axis for your GPR. So before we get into this minimum possible depth concept, we got to make sure we're all on the same page. So let's do a little bit of review as far as dielectric properties are concerned and wave velocities are concerned. So dielectric properties in materials that are generally explored with GPR range from about 1 okay, to 81. Okay, 1 to 80. This one's dying, huh? I got you over here. So let's say 1 to 81. Air. Water. Generally what you're prospecting for is somewhere in between. Okay? Air, water. This 1 versus 81 is the relative dielectric permittivity, RDP. And this RDP, right, can also be, uh, um, uh, you know, sometimes you as K is, the, is the, the letter to express it. But 1 to 81, right? So what we can say then is that water has a greater RDP than air. Okay, water has a greater RDP than air, right? Air, right, one is less than 81. Okay, what about wave speeds? What about wave speeds? Which, in which medium the GPR waves move faster? Faster, right? So for wave speeds, air, speeds of waves in air are faster than speeds of waves, right? Greater, faster than speeds of waves in water, okay? All right, so let's see here. An RDP, right, uh, let's say 25 versus an RDP of 10, which would be like dry soil versus wet soil, okay? Greater than RDP, okay, right, of wet soil versus dry soil, but wave speeds, are slower in wet soil than they are in dry soil. So the higher the RDP, right, the higher the RDP, the slower the wave velocity, all right? Now, 
Let's try this one more time. Say clay versus concrete. Which one, clay or concrete, has a higher RDP? Clay has a higher RDP, right? Clay is greater than, the RDP of clay is greater than the RDP of concrete. But wave speeds in clay are less than wave speeds in concrete. All right? So that's our review of dielectric permittivity and how it relates to wave speeds. So this video might take a few minutes longer than our normal videos, but I think you're going to get a lot out of this. So keep with me, okay? Don't go anywhere. Stay with me right here. Let's say you're on a site and you find a hyperbola, all right? And you model that hyperbola to get the depth. And the model says that your RDP is 25, okay? Right? Your RDP is 25, Okay. That then will be used to convert this 10 nanoseconds in two-way travel time into a depth. Right? It'll take this RDP, now that you match this hyperbola with a model that's on your GPR screen, and it'll convert this two-way travel time into a depth. Okay? So, here's the question. If this hyperbola is has an RD, right, shows an RDP of this subsurface as being 10, will this two-way travel time be shallower or deeper than an RDP of 25? Okay, so now it's not wave speeds move faster or slower. If they're moving faster, Will the depth be greater or shallower? Think about it for a second. Great, right? Well, with a, a lower RDP, faster wave speeds, will this depth be shallower or deeper? It's going to be deeper, okay? This RDP, the same, right, will produce a conversion that shows it's deeper than this, right? So deeper. Okay, shallower. Does everyone understand that? If so, right, let me rephrase, let me rephrase it for you. It's, you get 10 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, period. Period. If your wave is moving faster, right, an RDP of 10, let's say dry soil, during those 10 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, it's able to go deeper because it's going faster. So it's faster in, faster back up, means it can go deeper. If it's slower... 10 nanoseconds in two-way travel time is going to produce a shallower depth, okay? A shallower depth. Stick with me. Stick with me. I appreciate it. All right, here we go. Now that you have that concept down, right? So lower RDPs produce faster waves, which produce deeper conversions on this side over here. So now let's talk about how deep is your actual target, your pipe, for example. Well, let's say you come out of this with an RDP of 10, okay? Yeah. Okay, you have an RDP of 10. Here. If you only can match one hyperbola, that's going to give you a representation of everything around it. And if everything around it is homogeneous, that's going to convert an accurate depth over here. But what if you get a few different hyperbola? Right, you get one up here, okay, one over here, a small one, maybe a deeper one down here. And now you have an RDP of five, okay, five, 20, okay, an RDP of 20. So for example, that's like concrete, you know, uh, um, dry soil, wet soil. Your RDPs are getting larger as you're going deeper. Now, how do you say, let's say that this is what you think your target is, right? That's, this is your pipe. How do you tell your customer how deep this is? You're going to use this. 
You might say we hyperbola matched four different hyperbola at various depths. And our average was 10, and that's what we're using for our depth analysis. But the RDPs ranged from 5 to 20. That's a valid way of doing it. That's the first way I will recommend, or that you might want to take, um, is we're using this for our depth analysis, right? We're using 10, because it's our average, or our median, or a mode, whatever. But there was a range from 5 to 20, and thus... It's heterogeneous, wave velocities vary from top to bottom. We're giving this as our estimate, but, the, but we have a range. That's one way to present accurately what's going on below the subsurface and making a case for why you're using 10. It's in the middle. You got fives, you got 20s, and you got 10s. It's in the middle. That's what you're using. It's the average, but there's going to be plus minus because velocities ranged across this subsurface. That's way number one, and I think that's the way most people do it, and that's certainly the way that I have done it in the past um, as well, because I think it's a valid way to do it. I think it expresses some of the limitations of what's going on, expresses the complexities of what's going on below the surface. You're using an average, but you're giving a range in your dielectrics, okay? So then you'll say, okay, great. I'm using 10, you know, convert to this instead, you know, from nanoseconds, whatever it might be. It might be, I don't know. Um, you know, 0.5, okay, meters, and then 20 nanoseconds might have been, you know, 1.0 meters, and then that might be 1.5 meters, based on 10, based on 10. But what if it's actually moving slower than this in some of these areas, and rather than it being 0.5, let's say that that's what your depth is here, rather than being 0.5 meters, it's actually shallower because you do have some sorials in this subsurface where the wave is moving slower. What's going to happen? Well, it actually might be, truth might be 0.4. You estimate 0.5. They excavate out thinking they're good here. Bam, they hit it. Okay. Not good. Okay, not good. So what's another potential way? And, and you have explained, you've done your job, you've explained the complexities of it, you said this is what we're using, they use this number, because they don't understand the GPR like you understand the GPR, they still hit it anyway, they come back to you and say, this was wrong, you say, I gave you the range, I told you we were just using an average, they say, you did not explain that to me in a way that I understood, because I'm not the expert, you are, and that's something that's on your shoulders. So what can you do instead? instead of using 10, right? What can you do instead? So here's where the practicality comes in. What you can do is give a minimum possible depth. Minimum possible depth. It means based on five, 10, and 20, which one of these is going to produce the shallowest conversion over here? The shallowest conversion. It's going to be the highest RDP which is producing the, sh the, the slowest waves. So instead, this might convert, okay? Instead of 0.5 meters, this might convert, um, you know, to 0.25 meters. Now, 0.5 might be the real number, but you can say, based on our range, we're gonna use the slowest number, the slowest values, it's going to produce the shortest, shallowest distance between top and the possible targets. And so your minimum possible depth for this target is 0.25 based on 20. But a more accurate probable number is going to be 0.5 meters instead of 0.25. So when they go in, they can say, well, we know that it can't be shallow based on these numbers. It cannot be shallower than what this number is producing than what this slow RDP is producing. It can't be shallow in that, so we know at, at bare minimum, minimum possible depth is gonna be 0.25 meters. If it's deeper than that, okay, no damage. No damage. If it's shallower than, you know, whatever you put, there could be damage. So by going with the slowest number and making that your conversion, 0.25 meters is the minimum possible depth but 0.5 based on our multiple hyperbola matchings 
0.5 may be more accurate, right? More accurate, but 0.25 based on this number might be our minimum possible depth. So I hope that this made sense. If it didn't, leave a comment below and tell me I didn't make sense. Ask me a question. I want to clarify this for you. But I think this is a good way to approach talking with customers. Look, there's a range. It's heterogeneous in the subsurface. There's a range of different wave speeds. Based on the slowest wave speeds we're seeing, that will produce a minimum possible depth for our target of 0.25 meters. But a more accurate number for this may be 0.5. But it's a minimum possible depth of 0.25 it should not be shallower than that based on the wave speeds that we've modeled. That would be my approach. I think I'm going, I'm going ahead on my projects using that, that verbiage. I'm going to go ahead on my projects using that concept, this minimum possible depth concept. I think it explains to your customers what's going on. I think it's clear what's going on. I think it limits your liability because you're giving them something that it should not be less than that for this pipe, right? So that's what I would potentially do. Or that's what I suggest that you potentially do. I think it's a great way to approach your customers. Um, and this is a way, right? You don't have to be exact and perfect on every single uh, uh, measurement, you know, of, of depth, because that's not the way that the world works. No two subsurfaces are the same, which means the complexities are going to be unique to every single subsurface. But what you should do is your best to protect yourself and your customers and the infrastructure that's buried, rebar, utilities and pipes, cultural materials, archaeological material, whatever it is. Do your best to preserve those resources. I hope this was helpful. If you liked the video or you got something out of it, then click the like button below. Share it around with somebody you think might benefit from understanding this concept, this minimum possible depth concept. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notified whenever we come out with new videos. Go over to learngpr.com, pop your email and your name in, and we will send you uh, our weekly trainings for free right into your inbox. Enjoy surfing.